electric guitar is the wilder, more unwieldy cousin of acoustic. To make the transition from one to the other, we want to think more about controlling the apparatus than we're used to. Specifically, setting the knobs, string muting techniques, and playing smaller parts. Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today, live streams, charts, backing tracks, that stuff is on Patreon, and my deep dive courses, it's all on my website. Everything starts over here with the pick. One thing to make sure, coming from acoustics, sometimes people have a very big stroke Coming from the elbow, I would encourage acoustic and electric players to make sure that we have low power, medium power, and high power, both for single note lines and for strumming chords. Notice not moving big down here. I'll play a bunch of Bowie riffs today. Now, the next thing to think about with this guitar down here, let me get that so we don't have, you don't see the lights, uh, is our volume and tone knobs. There's so many ways to do this. I'm just going to tell you what I do. I like to leave these things wide open, as in all the way up. All the information from my pickups and my strings is going down through my pedals. And then through the amp, which by the way, yeah, the amp is set clean right now. Generally, just so you know, bridge pickup, thinner, brighter, more aggressive, nasal. Neck pickup, chill. Middle is kind of, well, both of them on a little bit in between. Now for today, and eh, let's leave this guy in aggressive bridge pickup because we're going to play Suffragette City in a second. One thing to note, and this is important, as you roll volume down, it does take away volume. It will also take away a little bit of the high-end information, the treble, the, to me, which is where the details of your guitar live. So just remember that, that this is not just volume. This is volume and treble. here let's go to the neck pickup now the holy grail for electric guitar players is edge of breakup if you've never heard that phrase before what that means is be it with an amp that has a master volume on it or you could run an attenuator or you could use a good transparent overdrive pedal like the Greer Lightspeed, I like this pedal a lot. You're looking for that sound that is, I can still hear the chord, but I got some, I got some fur there. Bridge position. If you're gonna set a pedal, here's what I do. I start with everybody straight up the middle. What's it sound like? And then I'm like, well, that didn't really do, honestly, well, that would be a good setting for, for like just leaving it on. I know I'm about to play Suffragette City. I want a little more. So I sit there and I play with this drive knob. But that's a little bright. Maybe I'll roll that back. And the final thing I check is that 
when I kick that pedal on, I want to make sure it's just a little bit louder than the clean signal. Let's see. That sounds pretty good. If you want to know how to play Suffragette City, great Bowie riff. Opening. And then, oh, Mick Ronson, so cool. I talk about this all the time. Hey, you want to know what I think is good to work on? Riffs and grooves from existing well-known songs. That's the stuff that you use to test how your feel is developing. Do you sound like a rock and roll guitar player? Coming from acoustic, you may run into a problem where you are grabbing chords too tight or chopping them too aggressively. This guitar has smaller strings um, and closer action. And just in general, you don't need to go full elbow swing away. Let's take a look at that. That's just a little piano riff from Modern Love, which, you know, I moved over to guitar. But yeah, that would not work if I was full elbow. Let's watch again. Tab on the bottom. Notice how much I'm just moving from there. So this is a big deal in general for guitar. And by the way, a lot of this stuff does transfer right back over to acoustic guitar. It's only that typically acoustic guitar gets dealt with in that very... Which I like those guitar parts. Those have a place in music. It's just that's not the only guitar part that you want to play. Now we've thought about not swinging from the elbow and moving a little bit closer to the strings this way. That also means we're going to bring everybody closer to the strings over here. And this is definitely a big difference um, from acoustic guitar that like you're going to get used to this hand doing all sorts of stopping on the strings. And what I've started to realize this is important to think about. We know that we have the pick and that that starts the note we have this part of our hand here, and that stops the note. And that is pretty darn important to realize that this is part of the apparatus, that this is part of the instrument, not just this, but this too. Let's look at Rebel Rebel, because this is really interesting. This has a full stop. And you see this throughout rock, that you'll actually catch the entire chord wah, with the back part of that hand, which also means that, yeah, if we got this thing going, we're going to be chasing that back of our hand around. Here it comes. So let's just practice that going. You 
You know a great song that does that? Not Bowie. You know, also any 90s ska tune. But yeah, that's a Say It Ain't So. That's Brian Bell's part while River. Let's just do that. I was trying to stay Bowie today. The other type of muting that's so important is palm muting with a lift. Let's grab a B flat bar chord. You know, I often, you know, call that the Neil Young thing. Where you got lift, rotate. So many songs are that feel like life on Mars. chord progression i've i did a video about that song that that song is just the top of chord mountain of course there's not even a guitar on there but it's that feel let's look at it uh tab below b flat e flat g minor <laughs> f sharp augmented f f minor c minor seven E flat minor so great and let's just revisit one more time on this much more expensive guitar yeah suffragette city again has fretting hand muting Yeah, just so in general, you're going to use this to start the note, this to stop the note. This also can stop the note. I never practice this, but you see me, my pinky does does some string muting for me also. That was the Gene Genie. So it seems like a lot to think about. But here's the thing. If you just learn the cool riffs, you're going to be thinking about it already. And so the more, that's why I come back to repertoire is the most important thing. The more you work on repertoire, yeah. repertoire, and really try and get it sounding like the thing, the feel, the muting, the appropriate dynamic level for it, the tone, eh, as close as you can get it, the more those things develop uh, than doing exercises. I really... I feel like exercises are great for beginners when you're just like, how do I move my fingers around the instrument? Once you're not a beginner anymore, I really think like riff out, play chord progressions and grooves from existing songs on to the next thing. We've thought about how the knobs work. We've thought about controlling our dynamics. Now, what kind of guitar parts can we play on this thing to fit in the mix? Well, the answer is just about anything. It is true that you can play all the stuff that you played on acoustic guitar, on electric guitar. It just might be, just kind of eats the room when it's coming through an amp. Like I said, that full swing chord thing Depending on the song, it's going to be too much. So you really can rethink things down to a very small level and like just take your time if you're in a jam situation and realize that like something that you would have never thought was a reasonable size part in the mix fits so well. And so just, you know, something I always think about if I'm playing with people is not what should I play so that everybody knows that I'm good at guitar? It's more about what's happening in the room right now. What can I do to make this room cook? Like, how can I get this thing cooking just a little bit more? And oftentimes it is a really small thing. So 
power chords, dyads, triads, double stops, or you're actually allowed to play the same thing as somebody else in the room. Less is more. Basically, less is more. Let's look at the guitar parts that Carlos Alomar put down on Fame uh, as an example of this. It's really interesting. That opening is F my uh, yeah F minor seven, right? Yeah. Little. That's a minor pentatonic. It's a very Curtis Mayfield thing to do. Dude, Carlos is a genius. C minor, B flat, and then he does like a chicken picking thing. Sick, off of that B flat, those are double stop sixes. I had a video about this. <laughs> That's such a cool thing. One, two, three, four, one. And then the, the whole band is just cooking on F. Notice there's a choke there. String muting. I'm kind of chopping up his part. I think that's a separate part. But notice to get that, I went... Catch it. And notice I wouldn't be able to do that if I was going like this. Too big. Now, I'm, I think it's actually Bowie who's coming in with the, the loud fuzzy guitar. I'm gonna turn on my fuzz, which I didn't really talk about today. Fuzz is... Fuzz is fuzz. It's not overdrive. It completely takes over your, your sound. So like the guitar is gone now. Now all I'm hearing is the pedal. But anyway, Bowie's coming in with a little... parts together. Now, the other part that I hear in there, I think it's Carlos also, because at that era, Earl Slick was the other guitar player, but this doesn't sound like an Earl Slick part. It's it's going along with the that, but it's this crazy because it's like, there's the F, here's an F7. So he's got those two, and he knows that the other guitar is going. So he put that D natural over there to get. But then the jerk, he's like, you know what? I bet I can get that C up there. <sighs> and so, yeah, it's very much finger picked. He might be hybrid picking it. I'm going to finger pick it. See how I could, had to get that finger out to get that? Sick. That is such a sick guitar part. Other things I wanted to talk about today. Notice, I didn't talk about lead guitar today. Not as important. Not as important as rhythm guitar. Rhythm guitar is the meat that makes up songs. I love lead guitar. It's super fun to noodle around and play blues. And of course, electric guitar can do a lot of things in that realm. Also, we did not go into all the various effects. I wanted to get an understanding of gain stages an understanding of dynamics and muting because that's the stuff I use the most. That's the stuff that's going to work the best in a jam situation. That's all we got to talk about for today. Thanks so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do with the like, subscribe, and share. You see YouTubers talk about it. It's because that stuff's important. It's the only way to let the algorithm know that you enjoyed the video and therefore it will recommend it to other people who might enjoy the video. One more time around how my business works. 
Patreon is where I put up backing tracks, charts, and there's also live Q and A's. And I make comprehensive deep dive courses on a variety of subjects. You can explore all of it on my website. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday, eat pizza.